You're doing a really good job right now, by the way. Like, smooth and steady. It's fucking terrifying. Really? I'm fucking terrified. Everybody at Matt Mosveen, and you are on air with Radio Chatter. Today joining us on the flight deck, we have Vancouver's very own Zach Gray. He's the front man of Juno Award nominated indie rock band, The Zolas. Zach's songwriting abilities have also seen contributions to, to many other artists, including uh, Carly Rae Jepsen. Zach, welcome to the show. That's great. The view is, it's, it's sick, Matt. It's sick. It it is a it is an immortal view up here. So we're at uh, six thousand five hundred feet over House Sound, uh, just north something north of Vancouver. We'll get started here. It's time to play a game called Did You Dabble With It? I'll <laughs> say the subject and then. Uh, you say in rapid fire sequence if you did indeed dabble with it. Let's get started. Uh, succulents. Didn't dabble. Tough. Duffins Donuts. Dabble. Hard dabble. The Travelocity Garland Garden Gnome. Didn't dabble. BC Boys Choir. Dabbled hard. <laughs> Thrifted Desk Lamps. No dabble. Blue light glasses. Dabble. Yeah. Yep. Interesting one. You got the you got the sunglasses and then you got the blue lights. I got the blue the... blockers and no, that's that's yeah exactly. Um, egg tarts in Toronto. Oh, heavy dabble. Oh my god, I've I've got egg. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> Horses. I have dabbled. Yoga mats. I've dabbled. Writing songs at the UBC campus library. Yeah, very strong dabble. Walking the Dog by Rufus Thomas. Very cute. Very dab dabbled it. <laughs> Early dabble. <laughs> Poetry. Yeah, dabble. Post impressionist oil pastel portraits of Michael Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> no dabble. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to get too political. <laughs> <laughs> Basketball. <laughs> I've dabbled. Uh, the Oregon coastline. Dabble. The Apple Watch. No dabble. Whoa, what are you sporting right now? I saw you putting a, a pretty slick piece on earlier. Is uh, that like a sun and moon thing? Yeah, this is a, uh, a, a Soviet uh, Copernicus watch. We're going to take that one offline, and I, I have questions for you about that. That's a sick watch. Okay. Um, the mech exchange policy. Dabble. How could you not? Witnessing Hey Ocean's David Vertesi perform a sketchy but pinpoint accurate sprinter parking job on a canal in Amsterdam. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I dabbled in that one. How Incredible. nervous! Incredible. How nervous did that make you feel? I, I thought we were. I thought it was going to be a true video fail, a, a legendary Amsterdam video fail that would that would go the rounds. It would have gone viral for sure the hubris of that man to try to park there. The Zolas. The Zolas are a band. I've dabbled. Um, one that composes and perform. We're not playing that game anymore. Oh, we're not? You, 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 we can keep dabbling, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're dabbling hard in, in some deeper, I've dabbled deeper too dabbles. hard. I've dabbled way too hard in that one. <laughs> Whether it's the Zolas or, or Lotus Child, um, what are some hats that you've had to wear um, that you you never expected that you would have to wear when you started a band. Mm. Uh, yeah, I didn't think that I'd be doing much graphic design. I didn't think that I would be like good at Photoshop suddenly. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of wish that I hadn't. I I'll be honest, I didn't expect to have to do any of that shit because I was convinced that my music was so fucking good that after we released our first song, there'd be other people to take care of everything for me and I would just be able to be a, a carefree, uh, a carefree uh, artiste. 
but instead nobody listened to us for like maybe 10 years <laughs> through two two different bands and then uh and so it took a really long time before i didn't have to do anything cool and by then i had become so opinionated about what i liked and didn't like that i ended up figuring out i had to do it myself a lot of the time Some of the music that you've been putting out recently, are, are, do you feel like it's at that spot, or when when yeah. did you become comfortable that like I can hand this to whoever I want to hand it to and feel really good about it? Uh, with the album of Swooner, I feel I felt pretty good about it. I felt like for what we were going for, it was exactly what we wanted to do. Um, yeah. But this one is at a never an, another level. I think like the. Uh, the album come back to life it took us a long time to do it which is normally i would consider that a bad sign you end up with something that that uh is was overthought but but this record <laughs> we certainly did not overthink it it ended up being pretty sketchy as it was even even <laughs> with all the the years of working on it so uh yeah we it's it's a record where like I don't. I really don't care what track people play. When if if someone says like, "Oh, I want to check out your music. What should I, what should I he listen to first? I have no opinion. I mean, I might have an opinion based on what they like, but for what I like, you could pick any track on that on that record, and uh, and they're all tens. Getting into the the weeds of, of like being a musician and like all the things that you probably didn't sign up for, you know, uh, tour managers, airlines losing shit. Um, could you tell us about the the New Year's concert in St. John, New Brunswick, where airlines where the airlines lost white space and you had to have it courier to you during the show? I, we did not. That wasn't. That was not my doing. Yeah, we we got <laughs> offered a gig. We got we got offered quite a bit of money to go play um, in St. John, New Brunswick. We went there. It was New Year's, so it was it was the dead of winter, and it was during a one of those one one of those winters where there's like I don't know polar vortex ice uh, apocalypse kind of situation, and so they every single outdoor New Year celebration in Canada was, was canceled, including ones. In BC, in BC, and so we were just waiting for ours to get canceled, and we were kind of not, a, we were not totally opposed to it getting canceled, mostly because we didn't want to play a gig in 40 below outdoors, uh, but also because uh, we'd still get paid for doing nothing. I mean, it, it'd be, it's fun to play and it's fun to have an adventure, but you know, as long as you have a bit of protection, then uh, you're kind of okay either way. So yeah. we were cool either way, but. But they just decided to <laughs> to be the uh, the toughest toughest motherfucking town in Canada. So we had to play it, and of course, because there was so much chaos in general, they lost all our, our luggage. Or the, sorry, they just lost the base for the most part, uh, and they knew where it was, but it wasn't going to come anytime soon. So we ended up borrowing a base from another band. When you play a show at 40 Below, you don't know what to expect. It's a different situation. It's a little bit like playing a show on on the moon because there's all these factors oh that you're God. not expecting like for example liquid crystal display c screens uh they're li they're made of liquid crystals that freezes at a they certain freeze. temperature they freeze so you can't any any electronics that use lcd screens uh they start to move real slow and then eventually they just kind of freeze and so you can't read them anymore so that you don't expect you also don't expect not being able to play a string instrument at all because your hands freeze. It's just like, it, it doesn't make any sense at all. So they had these two, like, they, in theory it was kind of heated. They just had these two heated ducts pointing towards us, but they didn't reach us. So I had to go and like in between sections of songs go and like heat up my hands. It was a total nightmare. And then halfway through this set, I see this bass and it looks like it's getting crowd surfed. <laughs> like a base case getting crowd surfed towards us through the audience and then i realized it's not being crowd surfed it's one guy making its way through the crowd and he gets to the front of the stage and he gets my attention and it's just like waving at yeah, you yeah it's the middle of yeah. a song the guys are still playing and I, I lean forward and i talk to him and he's like hey are you zach 
And I'm like, yeah? And he's like, sign here, please. <laughs> Straight to the point. He made me Nurse sign. vibes. I signed for the bass. And I turn around and I get, Dwight, your bass is here. It's time to play a game called Sagely Life Advice with Zach Gotcha. Gray. This was inspired by a, a comment that somebody uh, by the name of Scott PG, Play gotcha. PC, left on a 2012 interview uh, you did. And, and the comment reads, uh, swear this guy is from another planet. Love the music. Love is attitude, not his is. Uh, love must be is English outlook. Or something. Yeah, it's it's he's probably just he's probably just got an accent and he, like from somewhere. And in, he in writes the UK. in an accent. Yeah, I like it. Interested in more of his life views. So <laughs> we've teed up some common forks in the road of life that people find themselves in, and you tell us as bluntly or as loosely as you would tell like your best friend. Um, Here's first scenario, number one. Gotcha. Uh, you asked for a sausage and egg McMuffin, um, and instead of giving you uh, sausage, they give you they give you a bacon and egg McMuffin. What should you do? Enjoy it. They're they're equally good. Well, the the lighter the lighter touch of the bacon will do you good anyway. The sausage McMuffin is like slant, so slammed with calories and grease that unless you have some reason to need to eat that, uh, stick with bacon. I think. You're into the barista at your favorite cafe. Yeah. And uh, you've interacted with them, and they seem kind of flirty. Um, but, you yeah. know, they're paid on tips and everything. And, like, is, is the flirting legit or not? We're not really sure. Um, so so what do you do about that? Yeah, very tough situation. Uh, and, you know, that answer has changed over the years. Yeah. Uh, this is like a guy or a girl thing. Like, it, is, it, is not, it doesn't matter. Of course not. Uh... I think you have to you have to you have to have enough conversation with the person that you can get an idea. So, but if you have to you have to be that person that talks to the person. I don't know, you know what? But then you never know if there some people. Here's the problem. Here's the problem with with our city, or the, the city of Vancouver, with Canadians in general, uh, Torontonians and Montrealers not quite the same way, but Canada in general. Totally. It's a it's a we, different community vibe. We are. We are so polite that we are that it actually harms us because what should happen is uh, if you want to talk to somebody who uh, let's say they they work at a at a cafe or something and you want to say hi and and talk to them and and make conversation and if they're not busy uh, you should be able to do that and then they should be able to say like you know you know I gotta I gotta get back to work. And you should not. And there's no offense taken. But the problem with people from where we live is that they're they're so shackled by their own sense of, of politeness that they're they're like held hostage by it, and they totally. they can't bring themselves to do it. So it means that they people actively avoid making eye contact with strangers just because they know if they get in a if they get into a conversation, <laughs> there's some percentage of a chance that it will be an annoying one, which they have no tools to get out of. I guess my, my answer, I don't really have a good answer. I think my answer is you can't do it in where we live because there's a, there's a chance that you are oppressing in a very civilized way. You're oppressing that poor person who, who is just at work. And By no fault of your own or their own. It's just yeah, the exactly. environment that we've been. They don't, and they don't, they're helpless. They have no tools to get out of a, a conversation with you if they, if they so would like to. So, so I wish it wasn't that way. And I'd love to live in a, in a city where... People felt comfortable being honest with each other, um, and and if you do live in a city like that, let a rip, but also be keep your keep your radar up for signs that they want you to go away. Make it easy for them to say no. In exactly. A lot of yeah. Exactly. Um, you've had a few too many drinks at your friend's place. There's a deep fryer. You got Ooh. curious and started placing various food and non-food items inside of the deep fryer, and it has started hissing and spitting hot grease, and you've become spooked. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> I don't write these things. So man. wait a second. So this isn't your place, right? Do you have to clean up? No, you don't have to clean it up. It's not your place. 
You're at your friends, please. Oh, then um, it's their deep fryer. Let her rip, like deep fry some. Mar I, I mean, I I would want to deep fry a Mars bar because that's so good. What else would I deep fry? Deep fry someone's cell phone if they have insurance. Your aunt keeps forwarding conspiracy theory chain mail to you, and after two years, you've simply had enough. What do you do? Uh, you stop opening them. That, that I I've done that for way for way less. My uh, my mom and aunt for a while had me on a, a bit of a mailing list where I, they could easily send all their friends fun sort of Yiddish jokes because they're because they're they're Jewish ladies and they like jokes they like sort of Yiddish style Jewish jokes and uh, they were they would send me mail like that and I just wasn't into it and eventually I stopped opening them and then they started to realize that I wasn't engaging and they stopped no you, you, it's like the subtle cue that yeah. make it easy for, for, for the other person to say no in this yeah. case. Or you just make you fun of you, you casually make fun no of them, them later later in person you casually make fun of them for and, they hint, and they then they get the hands. Yeah. Beautiful. Well thanks for playing uh, Sagely Life Advice with Zach Gray. I think we all learned a lot today. Okay. So it seems like musicians can find themselves in pretty unfun spots if they're not honest to themselves on why they're pursuing what they're pursuing. And, and I was kind of curious, what does musical success look like for Zach Gray? Musical success, the thing is you don't get to choose your fans, you don't get to choose your path sometimes, and you don't get to choose what kind of success shows up for you. So. Um, uh, there's a type of success which is just talking to people for whom your music means more than uh, it'll ever mean to you. Like you, you created something, um, a, a meme if you will, that, that has a certain virality that will make its way into people's lives. The more fun songs, it will, it will trigger memories that they will carry with them until until they are on their deathbed, and on, uh, in some cases, uh, it'll with like the more sort of sad boy songs that we've released. It'll be something that that uh, they associate with hard times that they got over or with. Uh, so that's a form of success that that most people in this world never never get to experience. And I try not to take that for granted because that's that's maybe the the most. Uh, uh, lasting one but to me like success is really just a lifestyle thing I I love touring um, I love uh, being in uh, tour buses I like having my little little my own little cubby I feel like and a lot of people don't bunk. so that's really interesting. people don't yeah and I happen to really like it nice and I like waking up in a new place all the time and I like setting up a, a routine um, that sort of changes with the backdrop and so, yeah, for me, success is um, is touring big tours in a bus in, in, in as many uh, in as many different exciting places as possible. All right, so it's the moment that we've all been waiting for. Zach, I've got two control columns for a reason. Uh, mine's connected to yours, so yeah. um, I'm always here to help you out, but um, are you ready to, to fly a little bit? Yeah, and I'd like to dedicate this to my uh, my good friend Paul Perper. He probably won't watch this because this is far too late in the video for him to still be watching. He's not, <laughs> he's not that curious about me, but he's, uh, he's a pilot. He's a wonderful man. He inspires me every day. And uh, and once I got to ride in the cockpit with him, and I and all of a sudden I wanted to be a pilot for the first time. So he's uh, this is me living out my dream. I'll keep it. We'll keep it real simple. You wanna you see the horizon? It's kind of obscured by the yeah. clouds and stuff like that. But um, 
Go ahead and pull the the control column backwards, like apply some back yeah, pressure. Yeah, I see. I feel it. Even more. You can you can pull even more. And yeah. now you see it's kind of in line. Yeah. Well, that means that we're climbing, and you can yeah. see on the vertical speed that we're going up. Gotcha. How's that feel? You like that feeling? I do not like that. All right, then let's not go up or down. <laughs> so we're going to look to the right. Do yeah. we see any traffic? No. We're going to look to the left. Do we see any traffic? No. All right, let's make a, a medium turn to the left so you can start turning with the ailerons. So turn the control column. The control column? But yeah. I have to keep it like kind of, yeah, okay. So you basically want to look straight out and in the turn and kind of alternate between the two to, to keep them balanced. You don't want the nose to go down or up. You're doing a really good job right now, by the way, like smooth and steady. It's fucking terrifying. Really? I'm fucking terrified. Especially because the mountains are right there too, I bet. Yeah. And if you ever want me to take over, you just tell me. Yeah. And you can roll the wings level and just pull back a little bit. This is the hardest part, and we're gonna go back to straight and level again. And just look for the horizon. Yeah. How you feeling? I did it. You made a turn. I did it. That is literally the hardest part. I never need to do that again. Well, Paul would be proud, because that was a, that was a do, coordinated Paul? turn. How'd I do? Well, the seatbelt sign has been turned on for landing, and it's time to go home. <laughs> Zach, I'll turn the mic over to you one more time to uh, to take us in for landing. Tell tell the fans anything you want to tell them and uh, how, how we can find you. Well, unfortunately, we're still on Instagram, so you can find us there. <laughs> and I do check the the DM box, so say hello. And we're we're working on new music all the time, so there's we're gonna be at a, we're gonna be playing a bunch of shows uh, coming up, and uh, if you're at one. You better come say hi. Thanks for coming on. Really appreciate you having, uh, or you having us, us having you, both of them likewise. My pleasure. Appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. You know exactly what to do. Fasten your seatbelts and subscribe for more.